Universal Studios invited me out to visit the set of Jupiter's Claim from the Jordan Peele movie Nope. It's the newest addition to the tram tour, and I got to see it a few days before it officially opened to the public. Not only did I ride through on the tram, but they also let me and some other internet and media personalities get off of the tram and wander around the set. I got a deeper look at some of the details from this set, which not only made me appreciate it, but made me appreciate the Backlot Tour in general. Something that's been running for decades and has a long storied history with Hollywood. The other Universal theme parks all around the world might actually be bigger than the Hollywood version, but none of them have the Tram Tour, the one thing that started it all, and the most unique attraction at any Universal park. So I thought that now, with the opening of this set from Nope, it might be a good time to discuss the history of it. My name's Josh Taylor, this is Modern Mouse, and today I want to talk about the history of Universal's Backlot Tram Tour. In the early days of Hollywood, when films were still silent, it wasn't uncommon for audiences to purchase a ticket to the filming of a movie. In the same vein as being a part of a sitcom audience, people were encouraged to boo, laugh, and cheer while filming was being done. In 1914, Universal head Carl Lamley took $3,500 and made a purchase in the Hollywood Hills, a big lot of land that he ended up calling Universal City. It was a real unincorporated city that had its own police station, firehouse, homes, and of course the studio. Think of it like what Walt Disney World is today. You're actually flying into Orlando, but Walt Disney World is actually its own municipality. Universal City was its own municipality to the area of Hollywood. Lemley held a grand opening event in 1915, inviting both celebrities and the public to his brand new studio. There they'd be able to witness a Wild West stunt show, a bridge collapsing, and a flash flood happening. It was a stunt that strangely foreshadowed what Universal would end up becoming, considering that all of those things would make their way into the eventual theme park experience. After the party, Lamley would continue to charge guests 25 cents to come witness films being made there. Averaging around 500 guests a day, the studio became a major attraction to the Los Angeles area, and a staple for both tourism and locals. Well, at least until the talkies took over Hollywood and sound stages went from having audiences participating to the end of the 1920s where they were yelling, quiet on set. Universal wouldn't open their gates again until the 1950s, and it might not be for the reasons that you would expect. During the late 1950s and early 60s, film studios were struggling. Films were no longer the big attraction they once were. Once television became the norm that kept the whole family at home watching I Love Lucy or Gunsmoke or The Adventures of Superman. Television became the arch nemesis of the filmmaking business. This forced the film studios to stop putting money into building sets on their backlots, and instead taking the cheaper route of filming on location, leaving many backlots pretty empty. So Universal Studios opened its gates to the public in the 1950s to start selling them lunches out of the studio commissary just to keep the studio going. And if you've ever been on Hollywood Boulevard, you might be familiar with the bus tours that take you around to see the homes of celebrities. Those same bus companies approached Universal about creating a backlot tour. The bus companies would pay fees to Universal, and then the buses could make extra money with these new tours. That also meant that more people were on the lot, and they might be interested in buying lunch at the commissary. Universal also provided a script to the tour guides, which allowed them to talk about the sets on the backlot while also being able to advertise new upcoming films for Universal. Basically, it was a win-win situation for everybody involved. Eventually, Universal executives thought to cut out the middleman and opt to begin their own studio tours. Starting in 1964, the Universal Backlot Tram Tour officially opened. It was a 90-minute tour that included a break at the commissary for lunch, as well as a makeup show in the basement of the commissary. Tickets were sold out of a trailer just off property, and in its first year, the tour would show over 30,000 guests around the back lot. Universal had a hit tour on their hands, but in order to keep people to come back, they needed to show them something unique and interesting. And that's when the tram tour changed from being just a showcase of sound stages and sets 
to actually showing how films were made. The Bates House from Psycho has been a part of the tour since it opened in 1964, but the additions of the Flash Flood, the Collapsing Bridge, and the Parting of the Red Sea showcased how special effects worked in the art of filmmaking. The Flash Flood still exists today, and it's the oldest moving set piece on the tram tour. The addition of Jaws attacking Guess, an avalanche, a rock slide, and the battle for Galactica all joined the tour in the 1970s. And in the 80s, they added King Kong and Earthquake, which, by the way, the earthquake effect is one of my favorite things on the tour, and I'm very happy that it still exists. Please never take it away, Universal. More recent additions include the 3D shows King Kong and Fast and the Furious. And whether you like those additions or not, I know that they're either loved or hated. It's nice to see the tram tour evolve and add new elements of the industry and showmanship. By the 1970s, the tram tour had become so popular that Universal was looking for ways to entertain guests who were waiting for the trams. They saw an opportunity to expand, not just to be a studio with a tour, but to be a fully fledged theme destination where they could show how movies were made in a variety of different ways. They opted to add in the Wild West stunt show again as one of their first attractions, and as time passed, they continued to build new attractions themed to some of their signature films, including E.T., Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, and The Mummy. That leads us up to 2022 and the newest addition to the tour, the set from Nope, which is now open to the public. This set was actually disassembled from its site in the California desert and put back together on the Universal backlot. Tram guests won't just ride through, but will experience strange phenomena on an unexpected stop in the small amusement park of Jupiter's claim. Eagle-eyed tram guests might see some interesting details, including wanted posters, a pig up on the roof, and lots of little plush dolls that look kind of like aliens. The tram tour these days isn't 90 minutes long like it used to be, but each ride does last around an hour, give or take a few minutes. And because this is a working backlot, more so than it was in the 1950s and 60s when they started doing tours, you always have a chance of catching a film or TV show being made. I actually saw Kenan Thompson on the tour once working on a TV show. That was pretty cool. The tram tour guides are prepared with an hour's worth of material, and no tour is exactly the same. That could be because the trams have to detour through the lot due to filming or because new additions keep popping up. The tour guide that I met while I was on the set of Nope was named Chris and he had actually worked at the Universal Tram Tour since 1989. And he's seen plenty of changes, but for him he still loves giving the tour and showcasing how movies are made. Other studios have followed in Universal's footsteps over the years, including Paramount and Warner Brothers, but the Universal Tour is still considered the most prestigious. The tour guide job is also one of the most sought after gigs in the theme park industry, and I think you can tell. Some of the best guest experiences I've ever had at any theme park were because of the tram tour guides at Universal. It's an attraction I've been on dozens of times, but I keep coming back to it. It gives me a chance to not only hear about Hollywood's history, but it's also a chance to check out Hollywood's present, and attractions like Jaws and Earthquake still give me that feeling I had when I first got to experience them. Like the new set from Nope, they shock, amaze, and delight. So to see the Universal Tram Tour is a chance to truly see and be a part of movie magic. If you'd like to hear more about the history of Universal, I have a video here about the history of Halloween Horror Nights and Universal's connection to the horror genre. You can also check out some other videos that I have right here if you're interested, and as always, Thank you for watching my friends and until next time, keep moving forward.